Hello everyone, Reza here. In this session we're going to talk about how to do the scene cleanup, how to adjust your render settings, how to render your scene out, and how to export your image sequence into a non-linear editing package such as Adobe Premiere. Um, it's actually going to be very, uh, it's going to be a very brief video. So, um, I thought it would be a good idea before I show you how to render right off the bat, um, just go over the outliner. Maybe you have a similar situation where you need to do a little bit of housekeeping before you wrap up your scene and send this scene to your uh, facilitator or supervisor uh, for review. Um, the scene I have is actually a very simple scene. Uh, it's an object with a cap, a ground level and a dome light. Nothing special. Um, I'm looking at my outliner and I do see a transform node. I do see a an empty group node and although things are relatively named but I think I can do much better than this. So first things first, I'm just going to select all the models, the geometries that I have, and I'm going to go at, do a quick delete by type history. Now that takes care of the empty group node and that takes care of the empty transform node, which probably happened because I used combine or separate. So if you use combine and separate, make sure to do delete by type history right after so there is no unused node. Now, next is for me to select my model. I can either combine it, which is not probably the best idea. I would rather use control G or go to edit group to group my object. I need to include liquid in it as well, so click middle mouse drag, drag it into my group node and call this bottle GRP uh, middle mouse, bring my camera up and ground level bottom. I usually don't include ground level into the group um, node for the object because that's the uh, object that we're going to create a turntable out of. Um, not necessarily need your ground level for that. Okay, now we already have a camera. If you don't, make sure to go to create camera and camera. It's really not a good idea to use your perspective to generate the turntable. Now it's time to create your turntable. I'm going to go to Animation submenu and then Visualize Create Turntable. Click on that. So the option box asks for how many frames? Well, probably 150 frames will do just fine. Um, usually I suggest up to 300 frames. Definitely test it. Make sure it's not too quick or too slow. Clockwise, counterclockwise, I really don't mind. Now, what you need to do, which I haven't done yet, is to select your group node before you hit turntable. This is very important. Now, I click turntable and now right underneath here I have my turntable camera. It's better to switch to that camera via panels perspective turntable camera and what I'm going to do I'm just going to expand my time slider to 150 and now we have our turntable. Fantastic. Okay, now let's very quickly talk about render settings and then um, how to export our renders out. To uh, access to render settings, I'm going to go to rendering submenu, render, and render settings. Now that brings up my Arnold render settings. 
In here, you can right click in your file name prefix and use your scene name. Or alternatively, if you already know your scene name, feel free to add that here. Um, for image formats, I would use PNG or JPEG for now. Later on, we use EXR or TIFF for now. These guys do just fine. Now, frame animation extension, I'm going to switch from single frame to name hashtag extension. So, for example, project 1001.jpg. That's what we want. Start frame 1, end frame 150. I'm going to scroll down. Make sure your renderable cam is set to your turntable. Now, the preset comes from your project brief. So make sure to double check that um, and make sure you know what sort of resolution you need to output. I'm going to go to Arnold settings and I'm going to crank up my sampling to something like six to get rid of the noise. If you have a glossy object like I do, I leave transmission to five. Otherwise, if there is no glossy object, you can even use two or even one. I'll be using five. I'll be using four for specularity because this bottle is quite reflective. And I'll be using probably three for my diffuse. Now, there are a lot of options in here that you can play around and improve the quality of your render. But for now, we are good to go. I'm going to close it. Final step is to go to render. And then we go to render sequence option box. Again, very important, make sure your turntable camera is selected. Now you may ask, where exactly are we going to store these frames? These frames will be stored in your images folder. Then you go render sequence and close and Maya starts rendering the sequence frame by frame. Now I'm going to pause the video, I'm going to render the scene really quick and I'll be back. Now, as you can see, renders are done. I've got 150 frames. If I double click on it, I can actually see my render. Now I can just uh, have a look at it frame by frame, but it's better to um, bring all these frames into Adobe Premiere and then we can export it out as a video. So I'm just going to create a new project. Now in here you can create a new folder called this render or if you don't want to that's fine you just go and image. Now that's where you see all your images. All you need to do is just select the very first image and then you go image sequence. Now Premiere is going to read the entire sequence because of that checkbox. Make sure to select the first one and go open. Now I have my sequence right here. Left mouse button, drag holding the left mouse, let go of the left mouse, hit backslash to frame your timeline, and there we have our timeline showing the turntable quite beautifully. Now, um, I'm pretty sure your facilitator is going to talk about the user interface of this application in the class, so I'm not going to spend any more time on it. Let's get to the um, to how to export it as a video. I'm just going to bring the head slider to the, at the beginning, I for N, and then I go right to the end, and 
O for out and control M you can go to export M to bring control media. Now again check the specification according to the brief uh, this is my personal preference, so make sure to double check the format or the output specification that you need to deliver. For now, I'm going to set the format to HD64, match the resolution. So, I'm just going to rename it to Project 2, something like that. I don't have any audio and I'm just going to do export very quick now if I open here is my video so um, thank you very much for watching it was quite a, a brief video but a um, few tips and tricks make sure to go over your scene make sure it's clean make sure there's no unused nodes Good luck with your work.